The Ministry of Labour and Social Security continued work to achieve a responsive labour market and a culture of productivity in 2018 while delivering effective social protection for the vulnerable. Let's look back at some of the Ministry's achievements captured through our lens in the past year, starting on the social security front. The Programme of Advancement through Health and Education PATH got an improved budget of $8.4 billion for the fiscal year 2018-19. A $5.9 million incentive program, dubbed School Days Count, was launched to encourage an increase in school attendance by students on PATH. Ten scholarships will be awarded, each valued at $250,000, payable over three years to grade 11 students continuing their education at the tertiary level in September 2018, based on school attendance and performance criteria. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security also introduced a back-to-school grant of $3,500 for each PATH student to ensure children of poor families get an education and are able to end the intergenerational cycle of poverty. In 2018, two additional students received scholarships totaling $1 million on the PATH's 15th Anniversary Tertiary Award program. The Stimulation Plus Early Childhood Development Center in Rockford, Kingston received a $75.79 million upgrade to boost development support for children with disabilities. $55.5 million was allocated in 2018 to continue the Social and Economic Inclusion of Persons with Disabilities project. It involved buying and implementing a management information system and acquiring additional assistive aids. The Ministry signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Winrock International in 2018. This provided for technical assistance to finalize the hazardous work and light work list, review the National Action Plan on Child Labour, and finalize the National Policy on Child Labour. The capacity of labour inspectors to identify victims of child labour was strengthened through a training of trainers workshop in June. Child labour and its attendant problems are an unacceptable reality. Social security for the vulnerable was further strengthened in 2018 with a 20% increase in old age benefits payable under the National Insurance Scheme and a raise in funeral grants to $90,000. The service was also automated, allowing persons to apply online and receive payments directly to their accounts. And then came a 12.9% increase in the national minimum wage, effective August 2018. Security guards also received a 9.6% pay raise. We have taken into account the stability of the Jamaican economy, the rate of inflation and the economic circumstance of the workers, as well as the ability of the employers to absorb an increase. The ministry in 2018 also worked on developing legislation to amend the Minimum Wage Act, the National Minimum Wage Order and the Employment Agencies Regulations Act. Meanwhile, the National Insurance Fund, NIF, recorded strong financial performance. And as the ministry sought to create greater return for beneficiaries, a consulting firm was hired to carry out a comprehensive review of the National Insurance Fund investment and risk management policies. As we continue to reflect on the ministry's social security portfolio in 2018, we rewind to some 213 rain and flood affected households in Portland and St. Mary, who received grant funding in February. Relief supplies including bedding, food, toiletries, etc. have been distributed by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security to affected households and to those persons who are in shelters. A similar relief was provided to victims of a fire at the Walker's Place of Safety for Children. Looking back at the labor portfolio of the ministry in 2018, a Memorandum of Understanding was signed with the St. Anne Chamber of Commerce and Runaway Bay Chapter of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association. The MOU gave employers and job seekers access to the ministry's web-based labor market information system. Early in 2018, 300 farm workers, the first batch for the calendar year, left the island to take up employment opportunities in Canada under the Seasonal Agricultural Workers Programme. Another 80 Jamaicans left in August under the same programme. Approximately 7,194 persons were placed in jobs during the period April to June 2018 through government's expanded overseas employment programme. This reflected a 5.6% increase over 2017. 
As we accelerate marketing strategies for the program, opportunities in the U.S. care and construction industries are being discussed. Data from Statin showed improvements in labor market conditions, with unemployment falling to an all-time low of 8.4% in July. The industrial relations machinery of the ministry was strengthened in the past year through a series of seminars and workshops that expanded and improved the ministry's capacity to respond to issues affecting workers and employees. And the ministry increased monitoring of employment agencies as it dealt with scamming. Our website is updated regularly so clients can view those agencies that are licensed and every Sunday there is an ad in the classified section of the newspapers warning persons not to pay monies to people purporting to be able to place them in job overseas. And the Ministry of Labour does not charge money to send people overseas. The Ministry of Labour and Social Security in the past year also developed a project to create a new client-focused web-based work permit software to cut processing time and analyze the database of skills in Jamaica. The number of work permits issued was reduced last year following a review of all work permit applications in the second quarter of the year. As your minister, I do believe that we have a responsibility to find the balance between facilitating investment opportunities as well as meeting the employment needs of our citizens. The Ministry of Labour and Social Security in 2018 on a mission supporting employment, creating social protection for Jamaicans. Mm -hmm.